Every time I do a sculpture, I learn something new. In this case, I'm going to do a school of fish, and I learned a cool little trick, and I'm going to pass that along to you. Just to give you an idea how the process works for making a school of fish, this is actually what I've made in the past, and I'm going to make another one of these, only different. Uh, arrangement's going to be different, and I learned a couple of tricks that I'm going to pass along to you about how to make things look a little bit more realistic. Now, the first thing what you want to do is you want to go on the internet, and you find yourself a lovely picture of a fish. Now this is a salmon, and uh, don't ask me what kind of salmon, but anyway you outlined this with a pen onto a piece of uh, carbon paper, and then that will end up giving you this image. Now you notice I've got it 100% here, so I can blow this fish up or down using my photocopier. So what you end up with then is a whole bunch of these fish pictures. Now in this sculpture I'm going to be doing 12 fish and um, I'm going to change the arrangement and everything else. So I'm going to show you uh, what I've learned since the last time I did one of these fish. So here we go. Uh, so, since all these fish are different sizes now, I have to um, make them the parts relative to the size. So you see, the eyeballs are all different. The size is different from this size, so I have to account for that. This fin is smaller than this fin, so I have to account for that. And so what I do is I'll cut, uh, I'll paste all of these sizes onto a sheet of thin steel. Um, I use 16th inch steel for the really large pieces and I'll go down to like a 22 gauge for these smaller pieces. These um, have more structural support. Uh, they'll actually hold the sculpture up a little better. It gives me a little bit more to weld to. So these are your firmer, stronger pieces. They form the basic structure of your sculpture. Now this is going to be what's called a relief sculpture. Now relief sculptures are basically, uh, there's two types. There's an alto relief and there's a bas relief. A bas relief is actually what they call a low relief. It's not sticking out very far. It's kind of like a coin. Uh, the little emblem or the figure of George Washington on a coin. Uh, that's called a low relief or a bas relief. And then you have alto relief, so they're raised out a little bit more and they have more depth to them. So we're going to be doing what's called a bas relief. So, um, to create the image of depth, you just use different size of fish. And that creates the image that that fish is farther behind. So what you want to do is make sure that incrementally those sizes go behind each other. And then as you do, that gives you the image that that fish is farther away because it looks smaller. So that's how you can create the depth of uh, a school of fish swimming in, the, uh, let's say, a river. So now I want to create um, some realism to them. So that's why I've added on these little fins here in various places. So to do that, um, I have to duplicate these fins and try to get that eye the same size. So the way you do that is, um, you know, notice here that I have all of these different sizes of fish. And there's going to be 12 of them um, total. So here's the biggest one, 120. You can see I wrote on here the 120 because now I've taken off that um, paper off the front. All I have is the back and the front here. I put this on here using a uh, special marker. Let me show you what that marker is. Um, it's called a decorative paint pen. Now the reason I choose this is because that won't go away when I make this all red hot. That's called the annealing process. Where I will take this and I'll just start at one end. I'll just make it red hot all the way through and then you let it cool naturally. All this is going to get darkened. This paint, um, this mark here made with a magic marker is going to disappear. But this one's going to stay here. And I need that to stay here so I know the relative sizes of all the fish. So I know where to place them later. So you'll see here where I put a little couple of indentations there, that will tell me where to line up that fin 
for this size fish at 120 percent the next thing i want to do is identify where the eyeball is so while this paper is still on here i can make all these marks so i can identify features of the fish so by doing the eyeball what i do is while the paper's on here i take a center punch and punch right down the center of the eye and what that does is it creates a little dimple on the back side so um, here's a better example of that little dimple. Uh, let's see if I can get an image on here. You see that little dimple right there? So now I have to make that eye look more realistic. And the way you do that is you take a drill bit and you have to drill down in that. What I do now, here's the trick, is you got to find a drill bit that's relative to the size of the fish. So uh, obviously this fish is bigger, so I'm gonna need a bigger drill bit. And that one looks just about the right size. It goes right around the outside diameter of it, of that eye where I've lined it out. This one, smaller drill bit, about 3 16ths, is gonna be um, this eye here. So what you do is, the end of the drill bit is drilled at 135 degrees. So if you uh, punch this down a little bit too hard. You can always punch it back with a, a hammer if you want. Let me show you an example here of um, what you do. You see how that's been punched in? So now what I want to do is drill through here just enough to create that outline of the outer edge of that drill bit because when you made that depression, it kind of fits in that depression. So as you drill it out, you don't want to drill too much. You just want to thin this metal slightly and make sure you got the outline of your drill bit on the outside of the eye. That defines the size of the eyeball. Okay, then you have to create a special tool that looks like this. It's just a piece of 3-8 stock with a whole eighth inch hole drilled in it. So then there's uh, the trick of what you want to do now to get that back out there. Now that I got this punched like this, I can come in from behind and I can take this tool, um, in this case is a smaller fish, I'll be using a smaller tool, I have another one that's a quarter inch rod with an eighth inch hole in it, and you lay that right over the top of that little pin post after you've got this drilled out to identify the eye, and you lay that in there and you whack it with a hammer and it'll punch it out and bulge it out. Let me show you um, an example of that. So, here's an eyeball. This is finished eyeball, although I've kind of gotten premature here. I haven't even done the annealing process yet, but just to show you how it works. So I drill it out to create the de definition of the eye, center punch the eye when I had the paper on here, then I reversed it, and then here's what I did to create that little depression right there, is you take a little washer, that's bigger than the drill bit you have, or the punch, let's say right here. So I know it's going to punch down in that center, no bigger than that. So I'll lay that on my board like so. I will take the fish that's had the eyeball drilled out, go over to the back side, lay this bar so that that hole covers the pin post, put it down the center of the bar, and give it a good whack. And that bulges the eye out and makes it look realistic. So ultimately, once I put all these together and I arrange them properly, I'll end up with a nice school of fish like you see here.